Each week, we take three submitted questions from our subscribers and our fans. We're going to see if we can get Mr. Food to answer some of these questions that we have. The first one is, is gluten intolerance a common issue and how can I tell if I have it? So you were wondering if you have a gluten intolerance and if it is a common issue that is becoming more and more of a problem. Honestly, yes. I would have to say that you probably do have an intolerance, especially if you are wondering if this is a possibility. We at MBBCH do have a questionnaire highly focused on the gastrointestinal format to give us better answers, but we can look at across the board your different organ systems that gluten may actually affect. This is something that is becoming more and more of a problem that we are seeing as a group and as individual practitioners getting worse and worse. Using this questionnaire that we offer for free, you can help pinpoint more accurately just what you're dealing with and look at ways to improve it. The second question for the day is, wheat has been around for thousands of years, so why is it now a major issue to our health? You're correct. Over 10,000 years ago, wheat was introduced into our diets. The original icorn wheat molecule was in its original form, something that became a staple. It wasn't just once or here and there, it became a major part of our diets, breakfast, lunch, dinner. Now think about that. Every day, three times a day, this element is going into your system. Like anything else, too much of a good thing can then become an issue. So let's go back to that original aspect of a simple word called moderation. We need to understand what moderation is, and I'm going to explain that a bit more in just a bit. We here at MBBCH know that we can help these issues, and using that questionnaire that we offer will help. 10,000 years ago, when this was put into our diets, we did not have an issue. As we come along into the 21st century, about 30 to 40 years ago, we had an issue with the crops in this country, whereby disease, drought, and insects were wiping out crops. So the experts that be in agriculture were tasked with how do we maintain a crop that can resist these issues and feed the masses at a relatively cheap cost. Hence, they began the genetic modification of the wheat organism. Think about that. You take an original element and you change it. Something is going to happen. The original element was something that our bodies enjoyed. Obviously, the taste was set in a way that we wanted more, which is what kept us coming back for more. But it also gave us nutrient and fiber input. As we come into the last 30 to 40 years, the molecule within the gluten, which is the gliadin protein molecule, changed. That amino acid structure became something that our bodies no longer recognized as being something good or healthy or nutritive, and thus began an immune response to attack and kill that element because it was an invader. Think about the aspect of that use of something in a moderate format. If someone punches you in the shoulder lightly, you know, nothing major, but gives you a little shot, you go, eh, okay. But if they do it over and over and over, it begins to set off a signal of pain that you then go, okay, I got to stop this. The same thing applies to the other symptoms that you get, be it a bad night's sleep, be it bloating, be it stomach pain, be it constipation, diarrhea, whatever they are, 
That is your body saying something's wrong. This is your wake up call. Start listening. If you listen and you limit how often something that is disruptive goes in, your body can handle it better. Last but not least, the question is, if I have a gluten intolerance, does it mean I can never eat anything with wheat again? And the answer is no. Gluten has been put into a position that we enjoy. We want more. That's the way it is. If it didn't taste good, we wouldn't buy it again. And this is true. This is, again, something that you, who is the guard and the guide of your body's health, need to decide. Always always remove gluten from your diet for at least 30 to 90 days to get your system a good break and to let it heal. Once you've done this, then slowly reintroduce the gluten back into your diet. As you do, start listening to what your body is telling you. It could be something simple, like a bad night's sleep, as I've mentioned. It could be something more intense, like gastrointestinal pain and cramping. This is your body going, no, this is not good. This is not something I want. But it is something it can handle every so often or in moderate intake. This is where you need to decide how often you want to feel like that. Personally, it's not something that I want to keep on feeling. Yes, once in a blue moon, maybe on my birthday or for Christmas or a holiday, I may indulge. But my body and I can handle that little indulgence. So now the question you have to ask yourself, what's more important? Having the gluten as often as you want and suffering or being healthy and symptom free? Do yourself a favor. Take our questionnaire. Let us give you the response in a graph that will show you how your organs are functioning in relation to the different issues that are going on, including gluten intolerance. Then you have a better idea and we can help guide you along the way from there. Thank you and have a wonderful day.